Now to what some are calling the most consequential election of a generation right here in the United States. Vice President Harris and Governor Tim Walz will be kicking off a new bus tour. For the first time, the Democratic candidate and her running mate will be campaigning together in Georgia. Ms. Harris will hold a rally in Savannah on Thursday. The Trump campaign is said to be in an all-hands-on-deck kind of mode, traveling to Michigan, Wisconsin, D.C., Pennsylvania, five states over the next five days with potentially multiple stops each day. Uh, to break down the duel for the swing states is Matt Klink, a Republican strategist, and Dante Mills, a Democratic strategist. Thank you both so much for being here. This is going to be fun. Okay, so first, polling. It shows Vice President Harris leading Trump in at least four of these crucial swing states. Narrowing the gap in others, though, I mean, by all intents and purposes, no matter what poll you look at, it's important to remember this is still very much a neck and neck race. And Dante, I'm going to start with you. Again, I do not like when people report on this story as monolithic. I'll say it over and over again. But the black community, particularly in Georgia, do you think that there will be questions around Vice President Kamala Harris the candidate for the Democratic Party, and whether she can relate. Absolutely, there will be questions, and there should be. Uh, no one should win the presidency because of the color of their skin, no matter what it is. Uh, and Vice President Harris is really pushing this campaign out as a campaign of joy. She wants to uh, be in a positive space, bring America together. That's really what they're planning. That gets people attention. And she's still kind of in that honeymoon phase where people are excited. It's a fresh face, a fresh voice. But she's going to have to follow that up with what her policy is. And the economic policy is going to rule the day. She does have an, an opportunity in Georgia to win. Uh, she has Senator Warnock down there who's won two elections. He's very popular. He's going to be campaigning for her. You saw him speaking at the Democratic convention. Uh, she has enough of people's attention that if she follows this up with good policy, economic policy, then she can win the state of Georgia. She could win the state of Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin. She has a path to become the next president of the United States. And uh, right now, former President Trump has the endorsement of the governor, Brian Kemp, which, Matt, I think is actually really big news, considering all of the smack talk both of them have served on social media. Uh, but obviously, President Trump is leading Ms. Harris on the economy. So leaning in on that more, I mean, shouldn't the former president actually take that and use it as leverage in some of these swing states where he's already shown to have the upper hand? Uh, Adrian, you hit the nail right on the head, and that's what Donald Trump needs to do. Uh, it seems like Donald Trump has been obsessed recently with reminding people why they don't like him when he talks about crowd size and the 2020 election being stolen. However, when he does pivot and when he does talk about the economy and the 19 percent inflation under three and a half years of the Biden-Harris regime and, you know, $125 for a bag of grocery that used to cost $100 when Donald Trump was in office, he's going to win on that every time. That coupled with the Harris tax plan, which is a $5 trillion tax plan, including a tax on unrealized capital gains, which for anyone that has a 401k, you're going to get hit by that. As soon as she starts moving beyond the quote unquote, the joy and freedom, which by the way, for the Harris campaign means the freedom that government gives you, uh, sure numbers are going to drop. This race is essentially tied right now in the seven states that matter. And Donald Trump is significantly ahead of where he was in 2016 versus Hillary Clinton and in 2020 versus Joe Biden. So coming off a tough month or a great month for Kamala Harris, I'd like to be, I'm glad Donald Trump is where he is. That as as your other guest said, Dominic said, Donald Trump has a pathway to election as well. Yeah, Dante. Uh, and, and the fact is, Dante was saying something about joy, joy, joy uh, down in my heart. But I don't know that that pays the bills. How is she going to come to the debate stage with this joy message? I mean, school us on what you think she should be schooling former President Trump on. What What is her strength? Well, her strength now, uh, I believe, is the fact that she is a fresh face. And it's a little bizarre because as the is vice president though? of the United States... Is she a fresh she's kind of, face? Uh, that, Being that's the vice president over the past three years? She's kind of pitched this 
as moving forward with a new uh, platform. And it, it, she made it seem as if, and, she, and they're doing a phenomenal job at making it seem as if this is still Donald Trump's America that we're living in, and she's the one that's going to bring us out of it. Uh, and, and she's walking that fine line of saying, I want to take you know, uh, the, the accolades for things that I think are good about this presidency, but I want to distance myself enough so people believe they're getting something new. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the economy. Uh, all of this is even Donald Trump uh, talking stuff and, and, and everything, all of his comments, it turns people off. But at the end of the day, if they believe he will bring more money into their pocket, mm -hmm. they're going to vote for him whether they tell you that or not. So uh, what Vice President Harris has to do is come with a plan that's not going to uh, raise the national debt, but it's going to put money into people's pockets and give them hope moving forward. I think the, the path of that is attacking small businesses, giving them tax credits, allowing big business to come back uh, and provide people with jobs. But that's the only thing that's really going to carry today, the economy. It's going to be interesting to see how the Kamala Walls ticket you know, juxtaposes that with the $5 trillion tax plan over the next decade, which, again, the New York Times reported on. Matt, I wanted to give you an opportunity. Something I asked our Niall Standage from the Hill, you know, Bill Clinton mentioning at the DNC that don't count the lies, count the eyes, that former President Trump t tends to talk a lot about himself. What would you say if you had the former president's ear about making sure to turn the conversation around more to the people? He he's done it before. We've seen him do it. But then sometimes it just becomes the uh, the eye show. <laughs> no, I, I, Adrian, you're right. He falls back into bad habits and he gets lazy and talks about I, I, I and me, me, me. However, when he does talk about the Biden-Harris administration for the last three and a half years or how Kamala Harris, she is she's the equivalent of wanting to have your dessert first. All the happiness and joy that she's talked about the American voters are going to get a stomachache because they ate their sweets before they had their meal. And what Donald Trump needs to do is he needs to spend the remaining two and a half months of this campaign and remind voters that the Biden-Harris record is a failure and talk about some of the policies that Kamala Harris supported before she said she didn't and nobody knows where she is right now. So if he does that, he wins. If he talks about crowd size in the 2020 election, He'll lose. It's that simple. I would just love to know where the interview is. Where's the interview? I want to know before the end of the month. We're counting down the days. <laughs> Matt Clink. She's uh, coming Don to you soon. She's coming to you soon. Oh, uh, oh, did you hear? Is this, is this, can we fact check you? Did you? <laughs> Breaking news, Dante. Did she just text wishful, you, Dante? Wishful thinking. <laughs> wishful thinking. <laughs> I like it. Well, you know what? Hope is what we need for sure. Hope uh, with a good dose of common sense. Thank you both gentlemen for being here. We'll see you again.